What's going on guys? I'm here to do my Sea Dragons post-game video because, uh, well, yesterday I was kind of watching the game, paying very little attention to it during its actual live broadcast because I was streaming at the time with the Hawk's Nest, so I wasn't really able to pay any real attention to the game. I was just kind of, it was on in the background while I was doing the show, so I didn't want to try to do a post-game video after barely watching most of the game, so I wanted to at least look into it a little bit more before I said anything, so I decided, ah, I'll post the post-game video in the morning, but, um, after re-looking at some of the game last night, um, kind of the same general reaction, it's, uh, right now, just a little bit of a dumb team, that's, um, kind of the takeaway after two games, right? Um, this team, going into the season, was projected to have the best offense in the XFL, and you can, at times, see why. Um, there are many points throughout the game where Danucci looks like a really good XFL quarterback. Um, Knox looks like, uh, I mean, God, I, I think through um, two games here, it seems like he can't, every time he touches the ball, he's breaking at least two tackles. You've got, you know, good receivers. You've got some things that are really appealing on that side of the ball. And yet, two games now, you look up at the scoreboard at the end and somehow we have 18 points. You, you could swear, watching these games, that this is an offense that should be cranking up 30-plus a game. And yet, two games now, you end up with 18 points. It's like, something is not quite going right when the rubber meets the road. And also, the, another game where it seems like the coaching decisions really break down at the end of the game. Things that were working throughout most of the game just kind of fall apart right at the end. Um, in this game... You can really point to the defense, the defense which I thought started this game out pretty strongly. This defense which overcame a lot of um, turnovers on the part of the Sea Dragons offense. This defense where we saw a pass rush today. We saw some encouraging signs. I thought the defensive backs for the most part played really well in this game. Didn't give up anything over the top really. A lot of really good stuff from the defense. And then just at the end there... They kind of get blasted off the field on the last two drives of the game. One more stop, and you're good, and they can't do it. So, yeah, it's a team. It kind of makes sense why people thought this team was going to be good, but it just seems like a little bit of a dumb team, and that was basically the main takeaway from yesterday. So right now, look, nobody's on the hot seat because there was no preseason. There's no previous seasons. It's just two games. But right now, you would say that these coordinators and coaches are not doing great work. So the offense in particular, to kind of put a spotlight on that, um, you look at the numbers and it seems like the team is doing things well. They're moving the ball fairly well. Um, they're making plays down the field. They're, they're, they, when they go for big plays down the field, it seems like they have success. They run the ball fairly well. Like I said, Knox is playing awesome and arguably we should be running the ball more than we are. But um, somehow... That offensive production has resulted in 18 points in each of the first two games. And in this game, it was a lot more obvious, I think. But in both games, it's been about turnovers. This team can't force turnovers, and this team can't hold on to the ball. Really simple concept, I know. I mean, if you watch football for any period of time, you would know about turnovers. But three turnovers in this game, three fumbles. Uh, Danucci had the fumble where... I, I just don't really know how that happens. It, it, it's not even really a football play. It's just like it had really nothing to do with anything football. The ball didn't get punched out, I don't think. It just ba uh, botched exchange between the center and the quarterback. And I, that's, I guess, where you can point to and say, hey, this league needs some time. In fact, I think this game that we played last night against the Battle Hawks was a pretty strong indicator of the fact that this league needs some time. That was a messy game. That was an ugly game, I would say, on both sides. Um, obviously, the Battle Hawks didn't have turnovers, but they had other problems as well. They didn't tackle very well, I felt like. Um, now, granted, our tackling broke down a little bit at the end of the game, too, but they had problems as well. This was kind of an ugly game in its own way, but <clears throat> either way, you just have um, you had the fumble by... Uh, it, it wasn't Knox. It was the other running back. His name escapes me. But um, you had the punt return, which just seemed like a guy who basically just lost his head. It was a bizarre, bizarre thing that he did, even trying to touch that ball. Something that 
no well-coached player should ever really do. No player that is thinking straight should ever do. So, yeah, there's talent here. There's ability here. This team seems like they should be able to score a lot of points, but when the rubber meets the road, they're just not playing very smartly right now. And look, that's not surprising. This is a brand new league. This is a brand new team. These guys don't know each other that well. There are a bunch of guys who ultimately couldn't make it in the NFL, so none of this is shocking. But I'm looking at some of these other teams, and I'm not seeing the same degree of problems. Now, that's going to go away with time, but I think the thing that I'm kind of really hoping that you know actively needs to get fixed is this play calling. I don't know why we have June Jones and we're so married to all the short stuff. Push the ball down the field more. We can do it. I, I, like right from the start of this game, I mean, the first play of the game, we go deep. We take a deep shot. Doesn't work out. Okay. I was like, okay, we're coming out of the gate. We're going to be hitting the gas. We're going to be trying to complete big plays down the field. And then two plays later, third and 10, Danucci checks it down on a four yard out where even if the guy catches it, he's not going anywhere. So it's like, what is the upside here? What is the point of even throwing that ball? What is the point of even calling that play where a receiver is running that route? And Danucci basically throws a hospital ball while we're at it. I'm not a big fan of that part of it either, but I, I don't understand why you have June Jones in here, a guy who should be looking to gun it down the field. And so much of this offense is just check down, check down, short stuff, quick out. I mean, I understand that you want to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quickly in this league, maybe, but it just leaves you with no margin for error on offense, and and I and I hate it. <laughs> so that's the offense. There's talent, but like they did in the first game, they're just turning it over too much. And the good news is, the silver lining is that the first game was interceptions mostly. This game was fumbles. Fumbles should be fixable. Fumbles should be something that the players can take on themselves to say, okay, we're just not going to let that happen anymore. I'm going to secure the ball better. I'm going to lock up the ball better. I'm not going to let this happen. So hopefully that gets better at the very least. Danucci didn't throw an interception in this game, which was good. And hey, as much as I dump on the offense, as much as I just dumped on the offense, they drove down the field and came up with the big plays to win the game at the end. They did. They gave us a lead. Defense has got to hold it, and they didn't. It was an ugly fourth quarter for them. What else can you say other than that? Um, they, they had a pretty good pass rush the whole game. But then at the very end, they let A.J. McCarron get away from two... I don't, I don't want to say game-ending sacks, but they would have been massive sacks in terms of changing the flow of this game. And we just couldn't bring them down. Um Sometimes, you know, football is just that simple. We can talk about scheme, X's and O's. I can definitely talk about how, you know, the all-out blitz on the last play from scrimmage of the game, I hated it, felt very telegraphed to me, felt very exploitable, and the Battle Hawks did exploit it and set up their game-winning field goal, which I, I, as soon as I saw the blitz coming, I just kind of had that feeling that he was just going to squeeze squeeze it out to Prol. And sure enough, it was exactly what we couldn't have on that play, but, um, I, uh, yeah, sometimes it's just football. Sometimes the guy just has to make the tackle and he doesn't. So I, I, I liked what I saw from the defense for a lot of this game. I will say that it was better than the first game, but still the end was disheartening. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there aren't that many games in the XFL season. Starting out 0-2 is probably a bit of a death sentence. But I see why this team was expected to be good, and I see where they can be good. Um, it was just a really ugly, undisciplined game. We gave the Battle Hawks several first downs via penalty, I think like three. We were penalized way more than the Battle Hawks. We had some roughing the passers. We had a face mask. We had offsides on a punt, which gave the Battle Hawks the ball back. It didn't, um, I, it didn't really amount to anything, but still... I think that's indicative of the fact that we were kind of playing, that I'd say this whole team really feels like they're playing like chickens with their heads cut off sometimes. So, yeah, not not great, not great. But um, this is definitely part of the process in a brand new football league. And look, I, I mean, I'll be honest. The product last night was ugly. That was kind of an ugly product. 
there were some big plays. There were some fun plays. There were fun moments. But there are plenty of moments where you watch these games and you're like, yeah, I can see why these guys washed out of the NFL. So two weeks into the Sea Dragon season, I'm definitely going to stick it out with the XFL. I want to see where this goes. I know this is something that's going to get better with time, but yeah, frustrating way to start the season. I feel like we should have won both these games. We had tremendous opportunities to win both of these games. You know, one more play. You make one more play at the end of these games, you win them. And I think a lot of these XFL games are going to be close, but it feels like we're at a disadvantage with our coaching staff. Um, feels like we're really bad at clock management at the end of halves. Feels like that there's just some situational football that we're not grasping well. It, it feels like there's a lot of panic on this team when things get close at the end. And if most, most of these games are going to be close, that's a problem. So, yeah, 0-2 start, not good, not what we were looking for, not what we were hoping. But, uh, you know, these games... They, they're close at least. I'm not going to say entertaining this time because sometimes these games get so messy you can't really call them entertaining. But there's promise here. There's something engaging here potentially, I believe. So let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, see you guys later today. Go Hawks. Go Sea Dragons, rather. Excuse me. And uh, I'm going to continue to watch games for the rest of the year. But uh, right now... I don't know. Um, it seems like we have a coordinator problem, a bit of a coaching problem, and I don't know if that's going to be overcome this season. All right, go Hawks.